Let's look at Spain. First off, read this disclaimer carefully and do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So we go here to stock markets and we can find Spain in Southern Europe. So 38% here from the low, a minus 7-ish percent uh, pullback so far from the 52-week uh, highs. When we look here at, you know, the very big picture for the Spain ETF, you know, from iShares EWP, we do see that, you know, the time cycles have been rather informative for a very long time. Rise, decline, and when you look at the price itself, there is a relatively good match between price and the time cycle. So when we look at, you know, this high, it formed early in the cycle. This high, it formed almost at the middle. Here we are approaching the middle. Um, so it kind of begs, begs the question, is there more left here in this uh, time cycle? The middle here, it's uh, early 2022, but the low part of the time cycle, that is way out here. So, um, yeah. The thing is that Spain is very, you know, far from the highs. If you do, you know, a measurement here like that. Okay, oops. So we see that we have been in a very substantial downtrend. So Spain has not, you know, seen anything close to our recovery from, you know, the global financial crisis. Uh, we do see a pattern of lower highs and, uh, you know, lower uh, lows, uh, basically, more or less. That kind of complicates things a bit in the sense that it is already, already at a low level. Hence... Um, it could be that because uh, the stocks are so depressed that maybe uh, there could be actually more left here in the rally. What I do find interesting here, that is the potentiality of turning the red 200 week moving average into a support level. So it has been resistance, uh, it's been surgical support here as well, more or less surg surgical. So it obviously is a moving average that matters. Uh, so it's, it is interesting. Uh, we also have a, a bit of a messy uh, inverse uh, head and shoulder pattern. That also is you know, a key reversal pattern. If you look at some prior instances, we do have a bit of a reversal pattern here. Not, you know, like sort of like a mix between a rounding bottom and an inverse head and shoulders pattern. And that did lead to a significant rally. You know, after the pattern was developed here, we do also have that inverse-ish head and shoulder pattern. And we do see uh, a significant rally. We haven't had so far, you know, that much of um, you know, a breakout. I mean, we, we rallied a bit here, but then we t went down to test the 200-week moving average. Uh, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit skeptically uh, bullish. Uh, it is skeptical because we do have a big a big downtrend. But then again, um, when I look at this chart, is this an ideal place to go short, you know, Spain? Well, it is already at a low level. These are the kind of situations where it can be very dangerous also to become a bear because it's already at a low level. Uh, looking here at the daily data points, you get, of course, a lot more nuance. And lo and behold, we are goofing around with a moving average here as, as well. Here we have support from the blue 100 day moving average. Resistance became support. We are goofing around a bit below it. Uh, it's not a disaster yet. Um, RSI is at a low level that has triggered many recoveries in the past. So it looks interesting. I also like to see here this consistent increase in accumulation. So there's obviously some institutions that are, that are loading up here on some Spain positions. Okay, okay. When we go here to stock charts and look at the seasonality, we do see that July is one of the strongest for Spain. That is obviously very relevant for us because this is in July. 
August, paradoxically, is the weakest month, so it's sort of like it's a mixed message. But then again, September, October is strong, so we could have a bit of a rally, potentially in July, maybe a bit of a pullback in August. Then September, October, you get you get strength. Mm, so, so yeah, I'm leaning a bit bullish here. Uh, we do have this horizontal trend line, but we have lost the trend channel, so mixed messages here as well. When we compare... Uh, Spain to the S&P 500. The price earnings difference isn't that big, even though uh, the the, um, the charts look uh, dramatically different. So, but we, if we do calculate the difference, then the S&P is 15-ish uh, percent above uh, Spain uh, from a price earnings perspective. Then again, the dividend in Spain is way bigger, so you do get a three. 0.2 ish percent dividend much much uh, much bigger than what you get here in America Which is which is nice. So at least you do get a nice dividend for waiting And it does to some extent compensate for uh, further um, Yeah, if, if this if the ETF falls uh, further down So here are the top uh, holdings uh, rather concentrated, only 21 here for Spain and 508 for America. Sector breakdown, utilities is big, and that is you know, one of the safe uh, play sectors. Uh, probably this is where a nice chunk of the dividend comes from. And also finance also uh, typically you know likes to pay a dividend. Then communications, consumer, non-durables. So I do think that the sector breakdown here is very interesting. Uh, rather different from what we see here in America, where tech is on top, then finance, then uh, yeah, tech again, basically, then health technology. So the sector breakdown is is, is very interesting. I got I gotta say, um, there there is this kind of safe-ish play uh, sector uh, composition. Um, yeah, so I think that at this level, you're looking at this chart. Um, we are pretty close here, you know, to the lows we made here and here. So there is horizontal support uh, on top of the moving average support. So there's a bunch of support, basically. We have the 200-week moving average, we have horizontal support. We also, on the daily data points, have some kind of support here from the blue 100-day moving average. Then the seasonality is bullish for July. Um, you could make a bit of a case that uh, you know there's there's better value. Uh, the sector composition is more safe play-ish compared to what you have in America. There's a good dividend, so uh, there's a constellation of arguments in favor of Spain at this point. But we definitely want to see these support levels holding because if we, if we were if we were to break them, that would obviously be bad, uh, for sure. So yeah, um, you know, uh, I would like to see uh, price earnings be lower for Spain than it currently is, given you know how how you know, how different you know the chart looks from uh, the S and P. So here is the Spain ETF. Okay, so this is how the chart looks, and the price earnings wasn't you know that much bit, uh, different from what we have in America. And you see, America is just radically, radically different chart wise. So yeah, uh, even though the, the the companies here are you know, down a lot, uh, I, you know, the, in regards to the actual earnings, uh, there isn't that much difference. So it's it's definitely a bit, of a, a bit of a mixed bag here. But yeah, we do have some key levels to relate to, which means that we have some stop levels as well. So yeah, I would lean bullish here, but with obviously some stops in play.